Um, so I will just share my screen then. Yeah, go ahead. Um, in, in the middle. Difficulty. In the yeah, middle. Yeah, no, I. I did find that, but it's not showing me the window of the PowerPoint anymore. Uh, um, I'll just go entire screen. Here we go. So let's go like this. So can everyone see that? We good? Yeah, good to go. Awesome. All right. Hi, guys. I am Izzy. Um, I am from GSK. And I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a debrief, um, an overview of what, who GSK is, what we are, what we do, and the 2023 IBL program. So, GSK um, is an IBL this year. I am. I was just in your shoes last year. Um, in your position, listening to this presentation and thinking, who on the earth GSK is and what do they do? So by the end of this, I hope that you guys will have a clear understanding of the company and the IBL program. But to start off, um, for those of you who haven't really heard of who GSK is, um, here are some four quick five facts that will help paint a little bit of a picture. So. We are a world leading pharma company. Our main business areas are pharmaceuticals and vaccines. We have over 90,000 employees over 92 countries. And our headquarters are actually in Brentford in the United, United Kingdom, which is just out of London. So this is quite a heavy slide so I don't really want to I don't want to bore you with all the historical dates and events but I do want to emphasize the centuries of work which have gone into laying the foundations of what GSK is today um, in 2022. We also want to make some connections between some products and events that you guys may know and can relate to GSK as a brand. So there are some interesting milestones throughout the 300 years, which might sound somewhat familiar to some of you guys watching. So the establishment of GSK tracks all the way back to 1715 with the op opening of a pharmacy, proving that right from the start, innovation has always been a main focus at GSK. Fast forward to 250 years, in 1969, the Ventolin inhaler was launched for the treatment of asthma. Um, and also in 1972, amoxicillin was discovered, um, which is now used as a common antibiotic treatment. In 1987, the first treatment for HIV AIDS was approved. And a few mergers happened in the year 2000, where Glaxo Welcome and Smith Klein Beecham merged to form what we know now as GSK. Fast forward another 12 years, and a fun fact um, and an interesting milestone for GSK is that the 2012 Olympics Games, we were actually the official laboratory services using, used for anti doping measures. So, global healthcare company, GSK. As mentioned earlier, across the globe, GSK employs 90,000 people over 92 countries, with our main areas of focus being in pharmaceuticals and vaccines. So GSK previously included a consumer healthcare sector um, as well within the business, but this year, a demerger has happened, resulting in a separate company, Halion Consumer Healthcare. So from July 2022, GSK is going to be a solely pharma-focused business. Um, within a healthcare company, we have the Innovative Medicines Business Unit, so the IMBU. Um, we interchangeably actually refer to this as the pharmaceutical side, but... Yeah, technically it is the IMBU, um, 
So within this, we have our respiratory division, the HIV division, and oncology, which is the treatment of cancers. If you are a more visual learner, Pharma IMBU is like the umbrella business unit, and under that falls the respi, HIV, and oncology. We then have our vaccines business unit, which is further separated into child or pediatric and adult vaccines. Our vaccines business has a portfolio of over 20 vaccines, which help to protect people in over 160 countries. Another big area of business is research and development, um, where our sole focus is to deliver new vaccines and medicines using science of the immune system, human genetics, and advanced technologies to get ahead of vaccine diseases altogether. In New Zealand specifically, we do not have a research and development team. However, this is a key area of the business, GSK business overseas. And if this is an area that you guys are interested in, New Zealand can provide good progression for to go into those overseas R&D roles um, where possible. So yeah, in development at the moment, we have 43 new medicines in development um, and 20, 21 new vaccines. Pharmaceuticals um, as a business generated sales of 17.7 billion pounds in 2021. Vaccines generated 6.8 billion and research and development 4.8 billion. So there is a lot of money in our global business. So our purpose. GSK purpose is to unite science, talent, and technology to get ahead of disease altogether. This purpose comes together to form our three pillars, and these pillars consist of being ambitious for patients, accountable for our impact, and the responsibility to do the right thing. So, the industry-based learning program. This is a super, super unique experience compared to other traditional graduate roles. It is an opportunity to work for a world-class pharma company. Um, it enables you to gain real world experience in a very highly distinguished company, which not only opens the doors to the NZ pharma industry, but also to the global GSK business and the pharma, um, pharma industry. So this is a 12 month paid full time role. Um, we call it an internship, but that is pretty much what um, Australia calls it. So it is a graduate role. It's for students in their penultimate or their final year of their undergraduate degree or for recent graduates. So the recruitment cycle, applications open July 11th, they close August 9th. Um, interviews are between mid-August and September and then candidates will be notified on the 16th of September or around then. Um, and then the start date of your IBL will be mid-January in 2023. I just want to touch on something that the IBL program allows interns to discover a wide career scope, um, not only within the pharma industry, but we're also looking at in the wider marketing industry as well. Um, so that's really allowing graduates to Build on, build on strong foundations very, very early on in their career. So, GSK has been named as one of the top 100 employers. In fact, we actually placed 11th overall in New Zealand, and we placed first in the research and development and manufacturing sector. So, it's a little bit of a cool thing that we at GSK have. Uh, to be eligible for the NZIBL program, you 
have to be either an undergraduate or a recent graduate, um, which means that you cannot have completed your undergraduate degree prior to 2021. Uh, we also, it also states that you have to have only done honours and you cannot, can't have done anything further than that. So as a master's and a PhD. You have to be a citizen or a permanent resident of New Zealand or Australia and also be willing to commit to working full time for that 12 months between January 2023 and January 2024. So there are four IBL roles that are offered this year. First up is the Vaccines Brand Manager Associate. So this is a person that works across the vaccines business. So assisting on brands such as Bex Zero, Boostrix and Shinrix, just to name a few. Um, so this consists of an array of tasks which do differ daily, um, much the same as all the other role, IBL roles. But for vaccines, it's mainly involving creating materials for HCPs or healthcare professionals. This includes ads, promotional materials for consumers, because New Zealand is a interesting market where we can also um, advertise directly to the consumers. Uh, there's also in this role exposure to supply planning, also working with the sales reps and a lot in between as well. There's also the Pharma Brand Manager Associate, which I am currently in in 2022. So this is working across the innovative medicines business unit from chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder, um, asthma, so moderate and also severe asthma and also HIV. Um, some key things in this role that I have had to do this year um, is help senior brand managers create media plans for the year ahead. So we're currently going into some business strategy planning at the moment. Also creating materials to be used um, with those healthcare professionals and also directly to consumer, um, as well as planning events for HCPs, which is in person post COVID and also webinars that we can ha hold online. Thirdly, we have the Digital Marketing Associate. So this is the IBL that works across the business. So we're looking at respiratory and vaccines, HIV and oncology teams. This IBL works towards maximizing customer experiences across all the dist digital channels for GSK in New Zealand. So this is emails, webinars, sales rep systems, and also on our websites. Um, some day-to-day -day responsibilities is digital content creation, data analysis um, of our digital performance, end user testing, and also the facilitations of key digital campaigns. Then lastly, we have our medical affairs associate, so this is on our medical side, so more on the research and development side, if any of you guys were interested. Uh, this IBL works closely with medical affairs managers to help execute therapeutic area medical plans. So these are across different therapy areas and really includes a broad range of tasks. Some of these are supporting and delivery of medically led content to healthcare providers. Um, implementing process processes which enable the execution of these medical plans and also assisting in these medically led projects and initiatives. So throughout the 12 months as an IBL, there is an abundance of opportunities to shape your own personal development. Within GSK, personal development and growth is something that is so highly prioritized. It doesn't matter if you're at the general manager role or at um, the IBL role, it is really highly prioritized and encouraged. And there is so many resources and programs and courses which um, GSK employees have access to, which are designed really to provide career and personal growth. So when you have a glance, we've got 70% of that on-job training, 
10% of that formal training, so whether that be role specific, role specific and relevant to your business area, or really developing those wider networks and also 20% development relationships. So we have mentoring and coaching and we have our line managers to really provide full support um, throughout our year at GSK. So the recruitment process, um, I'll leave this on the screen for you guys to read. And I'll just give a little bit of a spiel on the side. So as you might expect and will come into with other businesses, the recruitment process is um, rather rigorous. But I do want you guys to always bear in mind that the process is just as much of you guys than it is for us. Um, and that you guys should really make the most out of the application process to find out if GSK is the right company for you. Uh, some tips with the application form, number one, apply well in advance of the deadline. You do not wanna wait till the last minute. Um, just as doing your assignments, last minute is never good for the psyche. Um, do complete your application carefully. Don't rush it. Review your grammar and spelling. Provide details by using the full use of the word count because this is really your first opportunity to provide details and demonstrate your motivation and your skills and really make that first good impression. Research GSK before applying. Um, this is to know a little bit more about the company and also learn if GSK is the right environment and company for you. And also, most importantly, think of how you guys can add value to the program um, you're applying to, as well as GSK as a whole. So if you meet our eligibility criteria, we will invite you to complete the World of GSK online assessment. So this is really an aptitude test. Um, this will help you determine your strengths and suitability to become one of the IBLs. It also gives you a really fascinating insight into what we do and how we work. So within this, you'll watch videos featuring some of our colleagues who will tell you about what they do at GSK. Um, then that will transition into setting up some scenarios which where we will ask you um, how you would manage different situations and scenarios. Don't worry, you do not need any knowledge of GSK or the healthcare sector to succeed within this stage of the application, but knowing a little bit or doing some research never does any harm and is always beneficial in the long run. If you make it through to the next stage, you will then be invited to complete the pre-recorded presentation and video interview. Um, this is where you can talk about what energizes you and why you want to work at GSK and join the IBL program. Then if you progress to stage four, we have the live motivational interviews. Um, and this means you've made it to the final stage. This is your chance to speak to the hiring managers and sometimes the business unit heads. Um, this is where you get even more of an insight into what it's like to work at a world leading healthcare organization. And it's also your opportunity to ask some questions as well. So why work for GSK? The big question. Um, Number one, we are a diverse and inclusive workforce. GSK really believes in the power of inclusion and diversity within their workforce. Right from day one, you can really feel the work that has gone into make GSK feel like an inclusive workplace where everyone feels engaged, supported, and knows that their contributions are important. We GSK is an equal opportunity employer and all applicants are considered regardless of sexuality, age, religion, color, ethnicity, gender identity or parental status. GSK is a patient focused corporation. Um, there is opportunity for extensive career and personal development. Also a great part is a really high mental health focus. Um, you are actually provided with five 
feel good days throughout the year on top of normal leave allocation just um, really provide maybe that well needed just mental off day um, so that you're working at your optimum throughout the year and you're feeling good about it as well. We also have um, volunteering what we call orange days where you get a day where you can just go into the community and give back and volunteer to those around you and as always we are a social workplace which never hurts really <laughs> um, so I'll tell you guys a little bit of the story on this page you get a little bit of a taster of what our workload can look like um, don't worry this isn't every single day but this is what it can get you within the big months um, this connect stuff and the chart of activities within the IBL year we have what is called the IBL project which is a dedicated project for the IBLs to work as a team you can take it involves leadership opportunities where you can create events and little things and fun things to do um, with the GSK office as a whole which is all focused on an overarching idea. So last year they had Connect, which was really just um, connecting with your fellow workmates in, in a COVID environment where it's quite disruptive. A little bit about me and my story. Um, I studied at Otago University. I completed my undergrad in 2020 majoring in neuroscience and minoring in psychology last year i completed my honors in neuroscience um, i actually did this in the pharmacy department so i guess that's where i tie my degree into working for a pharmaceutical company um, i originally saw myself going into uh, the research area and potentially clinical psychology however during that one year in research uh, i really saw how the pace of the research industry ran um, and it was quite slow and so i really decided that it wasn't for me and that i was ultimately looking for a dynamic and fast-paced environment to start my career journey in and i really have found that at GSK it is a great working place and there's always something new and exciting to do and put your mind to. My application process is a little bit different from the other IBLs. I'm actually a Tupatoa intern so that is a internship recruitment um, entity for Māori and Pacifica um, students. However, I did have to put in my CV and I did have to do those short quick file one, um, one minute interview questions and then I did go into that big final GSK interview to which has got me to the place I am today. Um, it's just some tips from the IBL team. Where, um, it's really important to research more about GSK as a business. Uh, watch YouTube videos. I actually watch some TikToks to <laughs> learn some tips and tricks for interviews. Um, it's also a great idea to think of all the different questions that could be asked you in these interviews. Write down some answers. I did it in my notes. Um, I actually practiced out loud to myself and to my flatmates just to get really ready for um, both those one minute quick fire uh, questions and the big GSK interview. Also make use of your career development center. Um, really take advantage of these services because people that aren't at university, they pay for these themselves. And, ha and so having these people at your disposal um, and really just there to help you is a major advantage and a major tool that I don't think a lot of people really utilize. And it, it's crazy but you really should they're literally there to help um, also polish your CV make it look professional make it look nice um, because that is what companies look at first and it really is that vital first impression um, I might go into a little bit of what a day in my life looks like um, so I work closely across 
pretty much all the innovative medicines brands. So mainly I'm working with Anoro, which is a COPD, um, pulmonary disease drug. There's also Brio and Nucala for asthma. Uh, I also work for sales reps, work with sales reps. Um, this is looking at creating ads um, and materials like emails and um, brochures. There's also commissioning advertorials um, and publications. Uh, there's also webinars, uh, analyzing stats and figures with alongside some market research. And I am looking at going into looking at doing some work with some public relations and communications further into the year. So that's mainly looking at health inequities and trying to kind of even those out in New Zealand. Um, the IBL program so far, it has been amazing, really has given me so many opportunities that I don't think I didn't think I would ever have given given to me at some point in my life. But yeah, really opens the door, makes you realize that there are so many, so many things you can do in the world. Um, it is just a really fostering environment at GSK. And so this is actually the end of the presentation. So if any of you guys have any questions, fire away. I'm more than happy to help um, answer those. But yeah, that is the presentation for you guys. I will take my share screen off as well. Yeah. Fantastic. Fire away, guys. Do we have any questions out there? If you don't want to speak out, I can chuck it in the chat if you want as well. If people do have um, questions, um, who should they contact? Or is there someone that um, they can contact? Yes. So the contact for UC was actually uh, the vaccines IBL. So she, her name is Shayla Jade. I will also put in the chat my um, email. So feel free to um, click me a message whenever you guys want. I do say that, Deborah, you asked the question gsk in new zealand is actually based in auckland so we work in winyard quarter this year um so yeah auckland cbd but yes we are actually able to work from home as well that's actually a global policy that with covid happening um and all the stuff going on, um, they have given us the opportunity to work from home if need be. Um, so yeah, it's very flexible in that way. Nice. Um, we have another question that's popped up. They're just wondering where they access the application form. Yes, so at the moment, applications are not actually open. They open on July 11th. Um, at the moment, it is open for um, an application of interest, but uh, we're just waiting for that later date for open. It is a bit different compared to like top four or law companies, um, but going through the application process myself, it is quite nice to have that later start date because it's not it's not at the time where so many things are going on at uni. So it is quite a nice thing. You can put your mind to it, really. But yes. Cool. Um, and do you have any tips for the students on how they might stand out in an application? I would really advise to put forward what you guys can do and what makes you guys different or how you can add to the company as itself. I myself, I'm a neuroscience major. Um, I have never done a marketing um, course in my life and I'm currently in a marketing role. So yeah, it's, it's really, 
you learn on the roll. Like don't don't get too worried about what you already have under your belt. You you do definitely learn so much in this role. Um, so yeah, what makes you different to everyone else and how can you give back to the company? I reckon that is definitely like the key message to get across. Cool. That sounds really great. Awesome. Do we I had a question, question? actually. Um, so, you, I think you said earlier there's there's no lab in New Zealand, so any of the pharmaceutical stuff is done overseas. So, if okay. you did want to do one of these IBLs, but wanted to go into the pharma side, which one would you recommend to do? So, the medical affairs, it's um, they mainly work at doing the stuff pre-commercial. So pharma and vaccines and digital work for the promotional side. So that's on the commercial end of it once they are released onto the market. Medical Affairs is working with more specialists, um, getting the research out there, kind of making what's known um, pre-commercialization of that product. So for you, potentially medical affairs would probably be more up your alley. However, all of them really, um, you can move into research and design from all of these because you do touch on so much across the business. Um, yeah, we're really not confined to just our small squares. They really spread okay. us across, which is, which is good. Cool, thanks. Thank you. It's all good. Sorry, did we get to the question that's in the comment? Yeah, I was just reading, <laughs> just reading that actually. Oh, great. Um, <laughs> so uh, the vaccines IBL this year actually did um, some pharmaceutical stuff, pharmacology last year. So she is, I mean, pharmacology and her degree. So um, it really goes towards any of the roles that we offer. I do think the biochemistry and pharmaceutical stuff would be good for the medical affairs position. Um, a lot of people that go into the medical affairs have some sort of pharmaceutical um, background. However, that doesn't, it's not vital. Um, it's just what's happened in the past couple of years. Um, but yeah, so to your, your answer to your question, yes. <laughs> Fluffed it, but yes, yes, definitely. Awesome. Um, any other questions? Well, that seems like the end. Um, and remember, if you do have any um, further questions, then um, you are more than welcome to um, contact the company. And there's an email address in the comments. Uh, yep. I will stop the video now.